All right, in this video, we're going to be covering uh, more of our look into two-dimensional kinematics and the motion of objects in two dimensions, this time looking in particular at circular motion, including uniform and non-uniform circular motion. And the first thing we're going to examine is some particle moving with some velocity v. Now, any acceleration you exert on this particle that way or that way or that way uh, can be broken down into two constituent parts. Uh, a acceleration component that is acting parallel to the velocity and a acceleration component that is acting perpendicular to the velocity. So, the acceleration component that is parallel is going to change the actual speed of the object, either increase its speed that way or uh, decrease its speed by acting this way. And oppositely, the perpendicular component will only change its direction with no effect on speed. In this case, it would pull the velocity that way but maintain the same speed. Now, there are some special cases uh, that have to do with the parallel and perpendicular accelerations. The first of which is if perpendicular acceleration is zero and this is not zero, then this is just going to speed up and slow down in straight lines. So it'll either increase velocity or it'll decrease its velocity and eventually go backwards, etc. Now, oppositely, if the parallel acceleration is zero and the perpendicular acceleration is some constant, in other words, there's no change in the perpendicular acceleration, then you get what is known as uniform circular motion. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. That is where there's some velocity and then a perpendicular uh, acceleration component acting on that particle with some velocity. And so we'll first look at a circle. Now if you'll recall, any particle or point in space can be described by a vector coming from the origin. In this case, we're using the uh, polar coordinates to describe that vector. So we have its uh, magnitude r and its uh, standard angle from the x-axis theta. And it has the components r cosine theta and r sine theta. Now as this vector r sweeps around the circle, it will be described by the constituent vectors r cosine theta and r sine theta. Now if theta changes at some constant rate, in other words, you know, it goes here, 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 at a regular pace, then we can replace this term theta, uh, instead of making this r vector uh, dependent on time, we can instead make it dependent, or instead of making it dependent on theta rather, we can make it dependent on time by replacing theta with an expression omega t plus phi, basically where omega represents the angular velocity, how fast it is going around the circle at that constant velocity, and phi is the initial angle. So you can see that if phi were to be zero, then you'd start here and move around at that speed omega every uh, t seconds. So as we've already mentioned before, you can relate uh, your position, velocity, and acceleration vectors uh, in two space the same way you relate them in one dimension. That is, by deriving uh, position and then velocity respectively, you can arrive at an acceleration vector, which I've preemptively done over here because it would take too long to draw or to write out all these equations on camera. But basically, you can see that as you derive from this position vector uh, r over to its velocity vector v, you uh, factor out this omega because it comes out from the argument of the tangent or the uh, trigonometric functions rather and you factor it out here and then when you uh, derive once more the omega comes out one more time and so you get uh, the acceleration vector at any given point is uh, uh, omega squared r and then it has the exact opposite components you'll notice of the initial position vector. So where uh, r had 
components positive r cosine theta and uh, positive r sine theta. A has components negative r cosine theta right here and negative sine theta. So A must then naturally point in the exact opposite direction of r. In other words, where r comes from the origin and points outwards to where the particle is, A comes from the particle and points towards the origin. So A is what is known as centripetal acceleration. Now centripetal basically just means, you can see right here is the word center, meaning that A is, uh, centripetal acceleration is always pointed towards the center. And this is what keeps this particle moving in this constant circle, is this centripetal acceleration. And if you look at uh, the strength of A, which you can find using the Pythagorean theorem, breaking this up into its constituent components, you get root omega, omega to the fourth r squared cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. We know from trig that cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta uh, becomes one. So the uh, size of A is simply omega squared r. Great, all right. So we've determined the direction of A, which is the opposite of r, which is why we have this negative sign down here. And we also know that it, the magnitude of A is omega squared r. So the full equation for A as it relates to uh, r is A as a vector is negative omega squared r as a vector. However, this omega squared term, it's we don't really like dealing with the angular velocity, which much rather deal with the linear velocity. Luckily, we have an equation for linear velocity in terms of angular velocity right here. So what we can do is determine the speed. If you'll remember, speed is just the magnitude of velocity, which is the square root of uh, its components, the Pythagorean theorem. So you get omega squared r squared times sine squared omega t plus phi plus cosine squared omega t plus phi. And once again, these have the same argument. And because of a trig property, these all become one, which means that the speed at any given point of v in terms of omega is v equals omega r. Now plugging in v over r for omega into this acceleration equation, we get that a equals v over r squared times r, or that a equals v squared over r. Now keep in mind, this all applies solely for when uh, you're moving at some constant speed, and there's therefore only uh, centripetal acceleration. If you have some component of acceleration, you know, where the acceleration is acting this way, so there's some parallel component right here, speeding it up, etc. That's what we've referred to as non-uniform acceleration and uh, or non-uniform circular motion rather and we won't be discussing that until later on when we get into chapter 7 and rotational dynamics. Now in the next video we're going to be doing some uh, example problems with circular motion just to give you the hang of uh, centripetal acceleration and the concepts we covered here.